There was something so beautiful about you guys in season one, though. First of all, you were like afraid of me, which was awesome. Great, uh, yeah. We have a stoner action comedy. We have like a Russian prison movie. We have a Scooby-Doo meets like Zodiac Killer storyline. Like, <laughs> it's like five movies rolled into one and it like totally works. I think it's good that like the show goes out on a high note, you know, yeah. and that- Like Shit's Creek. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, like Creek. Shit's Creek. <laughs> yeah, we're the Shit's Creek of Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> You know, especially coming out of season three, I think we're gonna see an entirely entirely different colors of Hopper. He's in a brutal environment. He's going through uh, brutal external things and also sort of brutal internal things. You know, one of the greatest things about the show is the the cinematography and the colors and things like that. And each, each uh, quadrant of the show has a different color palette. So Hopper is just in a very stark environment. It's a lot of like white and just like, dark, dark blue. And you know, he's going through, he's in Russia, he's being beat up by prison guards, he's isolated, he's alone, there's a monster in this prison. And also he has these secrets that have kept him from being the father, the man that he wants to be. And he needs to purge these secrets sort of on the inside to move forward and to be uh, the warrior uh, that perhaps can be necessary in the fight against this upside down. I don't know how to follow that. I mean, <laughs> it's you meet or you come upon Joyce, who is, I think, you know, still sort of grieving, but trying to move on with her life, trying to raise um, her kids, including her da daughter, Eleven. And um, things take <laughs> a wild turn, as they do on this show. And she ends up sort of in the fight of her life with this amazing gentleman to <laughs> my right. And um, we're, we're essentially trying to save, you know, someone very beloved and also my family and, and uh, the, the world. <laughs> um, but it, so it's your typical couple <laughs> weeks for Joyce. Um, but, but it's, it's a really, it's great because I, I loved this season because she really didn't know what was coming from one day to the next. It's just a really wild ride. Yeah. So that's she, all I got. Absolutely. Guys. Extremely well. <laughs> great. It was well, fantastic. That, extremely yeah. well. Yeah, no, it wasn't a follow. It was, it was an, a, a matching. This season, I mean, as far as Murray, I think that last season made him more open to uh, having friends and connecting with people and brought him out more into the world. And this leads him into, you know, despite all of his complaining, uh, being very willing and, I mean, secretly down deep, hungering to go on another adventure. And I think what's really, I think like what was even up to even more, I mean, everything is increased in this season. It is scarier. It is more action packed. It is more, uh, it is more brutal, as David said. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's also the funniest season. And I think like our, our involvement in it um, becomes very much like this action comedy and uh, and Winona and I and and then once and uh, you know wonderful Nico yeah and Nico uh, who uh, I is the best yeah She's we become great. like uh, you know it's it's we're like this this action comedy group in it and <laughs> and it's uh, it's it was really amazing and the action is way more intense than than it's ever been too so uh, I think like yeah just all the colors are increased to to the millionth degree how was that uh we're huh? killing it right and we passed three it off for three the... three for three <laughs> be safe i feel like this season's just bigger it's spread across more places and there's groups in california and hawkins and russia and i think it's interesting to see us kind of fish out of water in a new place and exploring what that's like and 11 without her superpowers. It's very different from what we're used to. And it's it's just very interesting to watch and see how everyone's coping with their new environment and their new struggles. Well, at the start of the season, we find her um, in, in tricky situation. Obviously she's being heavily bullied um, in school and she's really trying to fit in without her powers. But the storyline this season really goes for Elle revisiting traumatizing experiences um, and also gaining this autonomy from the men in her life, uh, finding what kind of woman she's going to be moving forward 
on her own and what does that look like for her so this storyline this season for Elle is that growing up it's that independent fleeing from the nest um you know but in order for her to do that she does have to revisit some scary things um in order to to get 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 through that I always I always laugh because I feel like at every single season Mike like he just expects everything is going to be okay all the time. Like there, there's no, like he never <laughs> expects that there could be, even though he's gone through like wars, death, seen people die. He's still like, man, I'm super excited to see my girl, like my girlfriend in California. Like there's no, tra- like there's probably deep down, there's some trauma, but like that doesn't come out. And, um, and in season four, he's like just trying to get through high school. Um, and he's finally found this group that he can kind of call his own. And then, um, but he really also misses his girlfriend. And so he like is super excited to go for spring break. And I think what's different, um, what makes the California stuff different is like, I mean, like Brett said, like it's like this season in all the storylines are so much like funnier. Like it is, even though it's more horror oriented, like we're straight up in like a, like a stoner um, action comedy, you know? (laughs) And like, that's, you know, we have a stoner action comedy. We have like a Russian prison movie. We have a Scooby-Doo meets like Zodiac killer storyline. Like <laughs> it's like five movies rolled into one and it like totally works. Um, and so that's what makes it really fun as a viewer to watch it. And like an actor too, because mm-hmm. it's funny that like, yeah, David just like starved himself for like a year. Meanwhile, we're in California, just like, you know, re- where's, where's the map? Like, that's like a very different uh, experience, so. A war is coming. I'm afraid your friends at Hawkins are very much in the eye of the storm. The characters are spread out this season, this season, so that makes it a little bit different. But as for Erica, when she was intro- first introduced to the show, there was kind of no doubt that she was very confident. So I think in season four, she somewhat steps in as a leader a little bit, especially during this very intense time. So I think that would really be cool for the audience to kind of see Erica a little bit in leader mode in season four with everything going on with all the characters and all the different storylines with everyone. So yeah, Priya's born for this. Erica's born for this. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Thank you. Well, I think it's a it's a pretty exciting time for the kids. They're in high school now, which is always for a lot of people the the worst thing in the world is going into freshman year, uh, especially after everything they've dealt with uh, in the past couple of couple of years. And so it's it's uh, a lot of basic troubles, like dealing with like knowing if you're going to be as close with your your friends from middle school as you're going to be in high school. Like you always hope that that's the case, but a lot of times the way friendships work is sometimes people find other interests or other people that they get along with, or things uh, things change and people change, and it's it's upsetting to see, and it's it's natural, it's real, it's it's cool to finally explore that in a show, but also we haven't quite had the ability to move on from everything going on in Hawkins, and after everything that happened at Starcourt Mall, the town kind of knows that there's something quite not right anymore. And there are a lot of secrets in town that seem to be bubbling up rapidly that all of us are trying our best to suppress. But it, it's, uh, of course, in Stranger Things fashion, not going to go <laughs> as planned. I don't have my powers. I don't know how to say this other than just to say it. Without you. We can't win this war. Hearing Gaten answer that question about, you know, going to school and friendships and stuff mm. like that, I, I thought that was a really good point because I remember when I was a young actor, their age, and, and I would, um, people would always say, oh, you're a kid, <clears throat> you're a kid. you'll, you'll yeah. learn. People would sort of write off kids, but I feel like when you're a a teenager and you're going through that stuff, it is just as painful and confusing as when you're 30 or 40, you know, it can be, it can feel like you're in the trenches. And I thought that really good. Like it's a really poignant and, and it's just as it, it, you, you feel just as much pain and uh, confusion and anxiety when, when you're a kid. And I, I often think that, uh, shows and and even books write off kids like oh they'll they'll grow up 
they're yeah. just kids. And I think that that this show does doesn't do that, which is really great. And I just thought Gaten answered that really beautifully. Well, thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Nice. <laughs> you know, confidence boost. Appreciate it. This season, I feel like I could speak for everyone else too, that um, our characters are at his most vulnerable moments uh, this season. My, my character, he's like, honestly, like crying for help. Like he's trying to find himself. You know, the first couple of seasons, he's dealing with his friends, you know, the upside down. But this season, he's dealing with like his own personal issues. He's trying to find his place in his life. He's trying to figure out what, if he wants to be a nerd or if he's cool or what is cool, you know? Um, but it's cool that he doesn't get too far deep into whatever that is that he's going through. And he kind of comes to himself uh, or, you know, comes to an understanding of what he wants to do but i would say hey, uh, vulnerability and caleb awesome. does that beautifully yeah really beautifully nerds for her all stars forever yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess the show just feels a little bit more mature now, and that comes with us being more mature. Um, it still has that classic Stranger Things feel, but yeah, there's a certain darkness to it that I think is a result of us being a little bit older. As far as Max goes, I think um, she's. we pick up in season four and she's kind of processing and grieving the loss of Billy. Um, so this year we kind of got to explore the effects of trauma and what that looks like on, on, um, on Max. And, um, you know, we kind of explored an uh, 11 storyline too. So that's like kind of, you know, that's the a big theme of the, of the season. Sadie actually might have one of my favorite comedy moments in all of the show, which is so funny be oh, because I, I like, think I know which one it is. It's when you guys are looking through the binoculars and you're oh, like, wait. Oh my God, no, she should so really good. shave. And then, and then Cindy's just like, let me see. And then it's like 30 uninterrupted <laughs> seconds. Of her <laughs> and it just, it cuts away. Face like, face at the end of it, it's like, so <laughs> unlike like, <laughs> like, like I've seen an episode yet. You gotta Wait, what episode up. is that? Is that five or it's, six? I think that's it's like five or six. I didn't even see three and four yet. So. It's like dead, like something you would see in like a real comedy movie, like some, <laughs> like a very separate thing. Um, and it totally works. On the other side. I feel like we thought one would be the last season. Like, I, I or like, not really, but like- <laughs> Wow. No, I thought it was like- <laughs> never Like, yeah, I, well, one, we like just didn't know, like after one, we didn't know how it would react. And then we heard that it was going to be three, only three seasons. And then we heard it was going to be four seasons and now it's like five. So it's like, we, you know, I don't know. Sorry. You can, no, no, no. But, yeah. No, but it's, it's a confusing thing because it's like, it's been going for a while. And uh, it's like the, the Duffer brothers, like they, they want to end it in like the perfect way. And I think um, five is right now, like what they're, you know, they're thinking. I think it's good that like the show goes out on a high note, you know, yeah. and that like shit's creep. Yeah. Exactly. Like shit's like creep. Shit's creek. <laughs> the shit's creek of. <laughs> yeah, we're the <laughs> shit's creek of Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on screen as um, during my throughout my teenage years, and you know you have insecure moments. Like through my ugly stage, I was on the red carpet. <laughs> so it's like you know, I, like when you're a teenager in high school, a lot of people are like, "Oh, I don't want pictures and stuff," but I have no choice to be in in the in front of the camera or whatever, you know. Um, but you know, when you have kids or teens around your age to you know talk to and. You know, we all go through the same things. And, um, you know, this guy right here, Gabe, we talk a lot and we have great deep Track, conversations. It, it, it's it's fun, too. It's mm -hmm. fun because a lot of teenagers don't get to travel around the world exactly. and have fans. And right. it's, a, it's a wild ride, yeah. I think. I think there's definitely a lot that we've learned earlier than I think most people would have, like, when it comes to being in, like, a work setting in a consistent way. But also, like, doing school during that was really weird balance and stuff. And it, it is a really unorthodox way to start a career in acting usually that does happen later on especially like after after you finish school it's usually uh when i think it'd be easier to start but um it's i think it's wonderful i think it's wonderful that if we were going to do it we got to do it on such a great project like this and also that you guys had each other it's it's it was hard for me sometimes being the only kid although <laughs> i like i always wanted i always wished i was older 
you know, mm. and then that, now I'm like the oldest one yeah. here, <laughs> but, uh, but you, I, I have such mixed feelings about that, but mm. I, I am so incredibly proud of these kids and how mm. they handle it. It's, it's such an overwhelming thing. And I couldn't think of like more grounded, kind, you know, in, insanely talented kids than these i'm i'm just uh, it's just beautiful we love, love you and you you know you yeah. get questions a lot about like oh what's it you know working with younger and to me they're i don't see them as younger actors i see them as actors they're very like yeah. uh you know incredibly talented and deep and and just very open people that are incredible like you know the few times that i get to collaborate with them on the show should have seen when we were like season one. It was a uh, train wreck. <laughs> there was something so beautiful about you guys in season one, though. First of all, you were like afraid of me, which was awesome. Great. Uh, yeah. There was something so like, and you know, you're, you're great actors, but there was something, you know, you guys were like 10 and 11 and 12 years old. It's bonkers. Like my stepdaughter is 10 years old now. And like, there was something on screen that you guys did so incredibly just where you couldn't even i remember finn's specifically like you couldn't even control his body kind of like you just weren't even <laughs> no. aware of that. And as an actor i'm so jealous of that kind of like life wow. and that spontaneity and it's the reason why you all became huge stars was like because you're just totally you were so alive in a way that a lot of actors aren't and then certainly child actors there was there was no self-consciousness so i mean yeah. you guys were just our star continue to be so incredible but i just that first season was really really special to see you know this gaggle of idiot kids just like <laughs> i remember like, i fell a lot i like couldn't yeah i had like uh gumby i had like jello legs so i just looked like i would just fall all the time i don't you know if you guys are on your hand I do, yeah. I have a scar on my hand. When we I'm were so shooting, sorry, at- I laughed at you. By the way, when you fell, and yeah. Scratched your when hand I, like that. we were running, when we were running down uh, this like frozen ah. gravel, uh, gravel, it was frozen uh, rock. Yeah, frozen right. rock, like at the quarry, and I fell, and it's in like the blooper reel, and it's like played off as a joke, but in the, like it, it was like it was one of those <laughs> things. You know, when, like a, you know, when, like a little kid gets hurt, and everyone gets like really quiet, and like people are kind of trying not to laugh, but it's also and like I was like. It was one of those things where I fell, and it was one of those things where I was like, uh, 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 and everyone was like, Jesus, man. Like, like I, it was a big, uh, yeah, but thank you, David. Uh, really nice. No, actually, no, in a, in a real way. Thank you. Uh, this has been Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table. Stranger Things comes to you the first part, May 27th on Netflix.